While the term new boat owner can obviously mean someone new to boating, it can also be applied to an experienced boater who purchases a new boat. In addition to properly outfitting your new or new to you boat, here are additional things that all new boat owners should do. Number one, register or document your boat. When purchasing your new boat, verify with the appropriate state and federal agencies what paperwork is required and that you have the correct documents on board. For example, U.S. Coast Guard documented vessels are required to carry the original certificate of documentation on board, no photocopies, at all times during vessel operation. You'll also want to ensure all required decals and state registration numbers are properly displayed on your boat. In addition to properly displaying your boat's name and home port on the hull exterior, documented vessels are also required to display the number assigned to them on some clearly visible interior structural part of the hull. The number, preceded by the abbreviations NO, must be marked in block type Arabic numbers at least three inches high and must be permanently affixed so that alteration, removal, or replacement would be obvious and cause some scarring or damage to the surrounding hull area. Number two, get insurance. Just like your automobile, you want to have the proper type and amount of insurance on your new boat. While some boat insurance needs and terms will sound familiar, such as liability and coverage to your boat if it is damaged, you'll also encounter new types of coverage that are boating specific. These include environmental protection, which provides cleanup protection should your boat sink or if you accidentally spill fuel or discharge oil overboard. The type of boat you have, as well as your boating plans, will determine what insurance is needed. The owner of a small powerboat, for example, will obviously have different insurance requirements than a cruising sailboat. Start your insurance search by speaking with companies or brokers that specialize in marine insurance, both of which should be able to advise you on the type of coverage you need. When purchasing smaller boats, Check with your homeowner's insurance company to see if and to what extent your new boat would fall under its umbrella of coverage. Uh, some boat insurance coverage items may also mesh with your automobile policy. For example, your marine insurance may cover repairs to your boat's trailer in the event of a towing accident, while your auto insurance should cover the liability side of damage or injuries caused by your trailer. The key takeaway here is to know what both policies will and won't cover and make sure your insurance needs are met. Two additional tips when shopping for marine insurance. First, the cheapest quote is not necessarily the best option. When comparing quotes, particularly between a marine underwriter and one that provides uh, primarily automobile or homeowner's insurance, be sure you are comparing apples to apples. Verify that both are offering the same types of coverage and amounts before simply selecting the lowest offer. The inclusion of environmental cleanup protection in a typical marine policy is a good example of this, as many non-marine policies won't have it. Second, choose a policy that provides an agreed-upon hull value, one that specifically states the amount of money you will be paid in the event of a total loss. Assemble a vessel information folder. This is a centralized place for all of your boat stuff that you need to organize, such as registration paperwork, documentation, equipment manuals, insurance information, purchase receipts, work order receipts, and the like. Uh, zippered index notebooks or accordion-style folders work great for this. For smaller or more open boats, a small waterproof pouch to keep title or registration documents handy but safe and dry is also a good idea. Learn your boat's basic maintenance requirements and start a maintenance log. While helping with the purchase of my first boat, my dad commented, you know, you take care of the oil and the gas will take care of itself. Uh, it was a humorous way to stress that while the boat will let you know in no uncertain terms when it needs fuel, you have to take the initiative when it comes to maintaining your engine. Uh, every boat with an engine will at a minimum require routine annual maintenance, such as oil changes, filter, uh, fuel filter replacements, lower unit or gear case oil changes, and possibly winterization for those in colder climates. Uh, the first order of business for a new boat owner is to learn what maintenance is required and to make sure it gets done. A maintenance log makes that job easier by providing a centralized location to note and track all of the upkeep and maintenance required by your new boat. Use it to plan future maintenance from engine oil changes to hull waxing, as well as to document completed tasks. And if you have a trailer, don't forget it requires maintenance too. 
unless you'll be doing it yourself, this is also the time to think about where you'll take your new boat for routine maintenance or repairs. Finding a good service center or marine mechanic are things best done before they're needed. Uh, it also uh, allows you to avoid the rush by planning and scheduling things such as annual maintenance or fall decommissioning or spring commissioning well in advance. Learn how to properly fuel your boat. Uh, seems like a no-brainer, but don't take it for granted. The open fuel system of a boat is different than the closed fuel system of an automobile, particularly with regards to vent spills resulting from overfilling the tank. Learning how to prevent these spills during fill-ups are crucial in avoiding environmental spills and the hefty fines they can generate. The other side of the fueling coin is to make sure you use the correct fuel in your boat. Check your owner's manual to verify recommended fuel octane requirements as well as restrictions regarding the use of ethanol fuels, specifically those greater than 10% ethanol or E10, as they can damage some marine engines. Be especially careful when fueling at roadside gas stations and fuel plazas. Unlike most marinas, they often carry higher ethanol blends and the pump labeling uh, for them is often easy to miss. Uh, learn your boat and how to operate it correctly. The training and expertise to operate your new boat is an important step for any new boat purchase. While you definitely have to learn the basics, starting the engine, steering the boat, there's a lot of other skills that go along with operating your boat, from docking or launching a trailer boat to anchoring, navigation, and learning the rules of the road. This is true even for experienced buyers, particularly if transitioning to a new type of boat, such as from power to sail. Although the basics may be similar, a single-engine sailboat operates differently than a twin-engine powerboat. New to sailing owners may treat their new purchase like a powerboat with a big stick in the middle of it to begin with, and that's not a problem. Everybody crawls before they walk, or in this case, throttle jockey before they sail. And it's a perfectly acceptable attitude as long as you learn your new boat and new skills. Crewing for other boat owners is a great way to learn about your own as is taking boating education and safety courses, such as those offered by the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary, United States Power Squadron, as well as other state and local agencies and organizations. Learn how to tow and launch your trailer boat. The beauty of a trailer boat is you can easily explore new waters, but for new owners, it means learning three new skill sets to do it safely, towing, launching, and retrieving. If the plan is to utilize your existing vehicle to tow your new boat, do yourself a huge favor. Make sure it's sufficient to tow the boat you're buying. Uh, check the vehicle owner's manual to determine if the boat falls within the vehicle's maximum tow capacity or GCVR, Gross Combined Vehicle Rating. Don't forget that this number includes not only the boat and trailer, but also the weight of everything inside it, such as fuel, water, coolers, and gear. Boat ramps can be a zoo at times, but there is a procedural etiquette involved when it comes to launching and retrieving just to keep things civil and flowing smoothly. Avoid being the recipient of muttered curses in the stink eye by taking the time to learn the protocols for the ramp you're using and practice both evolutions to improve your proficiency. Weekends are the busiest time at the boat ramp, so a visit during the week will allow you to practice launching and retrieving your boat without rushing or the critical gaze of the peanut gallery. Boat storage. After what type of boat do I want? Where will I keep it is the second most important question a buyer will ask themselves. Unless you live on the water or own your own lift or dock, the answer will likely be at a marina, on a trailer, or possibly both, as many marinas offer trailer boat storage options. For smaller boats with trailers, the answer can be as simple as parking in your garage or driveway. If the former, ask yourself, will it fit inside the garage? If the latter, if they are neighborhood or homeowners association restrictions in place for long-term residential parking of your new boat.